Hmm. Till now we have dis discussed uh, penetration and shock wave propagation. And now we are basically going to combine the two. For example, you are planning to design an underground bunker, right? So let me, yeah. So here you are planning to design your or build your underground bunker. So basically this is hidden beneath the earth. So just a moment. Huh? So what will happen uh, that there is a possibility that the enemy cannot attack this structure directly because this is hidden. So we will get the advantage of this uh, hidden thing. But what can happen, there can be near miss attack, for example, this case. So maybe enemy will know that in this big zone, the structure is present somewhere, right? So he will make a target and he will hit here. He or she, I don't know, uh, the, the enemy will attack here. And in that case, what we can, uh, uh, as a designer, we can choose a particular depth of penetration based on the soil strata and the properties of the uh, penetration uh, projectile or missile. Uh, as I already discussed in our uh, projectile penetration lecture. And also, we so for example, the missile reaches to a depth of burst, see capital D, right, this one, and then it explodes. So what will happen, the shock waves will travel from this source of explosion. So, so shock waves will travel, like if we assume spherical waves, so waves, wave fronts will be hitting to the ground surface. There will be some wave fronts which will go directly to the structure. There will be some wave fronts which will get reflected from the deeper layers. Because you know, mostly the soil strata is not uniform. Uh, soil strata, as you might have seen in your geotechnical engineering courses, that generally uh, when we go deeper, there can be water table or rock layer or maybe some other type of soil layer. So for example, there may be sand, there may be clay or something like that. So when there is a change in layer, change in soil type or change in strata, there will be change in the impedance, change in rho into C, which I discussed in the previous lecture. So if there is a change in impedance, there will be reflection of the waves because of changing material properties, which is very common in uh, soil strata. So suppose one shock wave is propagating in this path, so it will hit this particular interface between two types of geomaterials and from there it will reflect. Our target is to compute stresses on this underground structure. As a designer, we are interested in, in computing the stresses on this structure and then we want to design our structure or we want to check the safety of our existing structure for the loads that may arrive at some target point. So for example, we have chosen this target point, right? And then uh, the process that we will learn here in this particular ray path approach, we can apply to any point on the structure and uh, we can make an engineering judgment or we can make an engineering decision that for which particular stress and uh, how do we want to design our underground structure to safeguard from the resulting resultant stresses. 
another thing that i discussed if you remember in our previous lecture that i discussed that when shock wave propagates through geomaterials so there will be attenuation of shock waves also because because there is a non linear stress strain behavior of geomaterials so there will be some kind of hysteresis loss or you can say the 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 soil material or the geomaterial which will absorb some amount of energy and that will basically attenuate the shock stress that will reach to the structure so while computing the resultant stress on the structure we also need to account for that attenuation attenuation is something that will depend upon how long the wave propagates in the medium longer the travel time of the wave longer the travel path of the wave in the media longer will be the uh, higher will be the attenuation is this very because the more time it is spending in the media before reaching the structure more attenuation will happen to the wave so that's why we need to know the these distances this is the distance of this direct path then distance of this uh, reflected path and then this path so we need to know all the lengths of this path uh, before reaching to the structure so that we can decide how much stress is reaching to this particular uh, location on the structure so in this ray path approach uh, this is basically based on simple uh, you can say optics that you have studied in your uh, class 12th or also on the wave propagation this very simple concept nothing very complicated so this direct path is nothing but the wave is reaching on this particular location so this is just a straight line depending upon the final point of destination on the structure and the location of explosion in this path first the wave is traveling uh, along the uh, uh, along this line and then hitting the ground surface so again this is the interface here it is ambient atmosphere above the ground and this is another media geomaterial so what is happening when the wave is hitting this particular interface there will be reflection so now this reflected wave is reaching to the this point so what we have done we have extended this reflected wave to a imaginary uh, source for surface reflection surface means reflection from the surface so from the similar triangle this length or this height of this imaginary source is same as this depth of burst so this is also capital d this is also capital d then if you see this another wave which is traveling in this direction it is reflecting like this from this uh, water table or rock layer if you extend it uh, backwards this imaginary source uh, from the similar triangle rule you can find this height of burst in this media will be same as this depth of uh, that imaginary source so suppose the thickness of layer this particular first layer is capital is, is a small h and depth of burst is capital d so you can easily write this will be small h minus capital d so this will be a small h minus capital d and this one is capital d now here the depth of the point of interest has been considered as capital z here so now we know the depth of this point is capital z the depth of this point is capital d this is horizontal line now what i want you to calculate the length of this path this path and this path 
using the basic trigonometry geometry coordinate geometry so all of you please start computing this so my suggestion will be first make this diagram in your notebook no need to make all this uh, thing not required just make the geometrical diagram for this particular point and then calculate the length of the direct path which is rd what is rd can someone tell it is very easy Re, uh, the length of the direct path r kept rd yes small r sir this equal to so calculate the length of direct path s square plus uh, h uh, d minus uh, z square pardon pardon please can you repeat again under root of r square plus uh, d minus z square this yes sir who is this who told this answer who told this answer anurag very good this is correct so this is the direct path excellent now compute rs so rs is this total path path for surface reflection please calculate this path for surface reflection So root of d plus z square root of d plus z ka whole square d plus z whole square plus r square plus r square small r square mm, is it correct i doubt there is some mistake please check see carefully my pal sir it would be r by 2 whole square plus z square square root plus square root of r by whole square plus d square this one mm, yes r s this is looking even more complicated it will be something very simple but there is a very small mistake sir i uh, interchange this, the r and z yes so this should be z square so now let me help uh, uh, to calculate this okay so suppose this is ground surface right your missile is penetrating till here so this depth is how much d 
कैपिटल डी राइट यस कैपिटल डी समवन इज मैसेजिंग समथिंग बिकॉज आई एम नॉट एबल टू सी ओके सो दिस इज द डेप्थ ऑफ दर मिसाइल कैपिटल डी दिस पॉइंट राइट एंड से योर स्ट्रक्चर पॉइंट दैट वी आर इंटरेस्टेड टू कैलकुलेट इज से दिस पॉइंट द डेप्थ इज हाउ मच जेड जेड वेरी गुड and the distance between the the stand off distance between the structure and the missile is how much uh -huh. small r right so our target is to compute the direct distance so which is this the figure is very bad uh very bad quality figure zero marks for that so this we are interested in cal calculating this direct path capital rd so now what is this length this vertical length how much d minus d. capital d minus Z. This is R. So now, from the Pythagoras theorem, what we can write? R D square equal to this length is. R Sorry. square. Uh, yeah, uh, my mistake. This should be like this. So because I am considering this point, right? Then, so I am considering this point. So this should be a small R. Missile is here. structure point is here so rd square is equal to small r square plus capital d minus z whole square so direct path length is equal to r square plus capital d minus z whole square so this is your direct path okay so this was the calculation for direct path so few people uh, computed it correctly now we are coming to path for surface reflection so how to compute that so now we know that this was the point of missile this was the point on the structure and uh, this was the uh, so some reflection happened from this particular point say so we have extended this something like that so this is your dotted oh oh this is deleting completely Pum, 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 pum. Okay, so this was like this. This ray path was like this. So it is hitting here, then it is reflecting like this. So now we are extending this one like this. It's very difficult to make uh, diagrams on this. Good quality diagrams on this one. Sometimes. Okay. Anyways, so this was your. that rd direct path this horizontal distance was again sorry for the bad diagram but uh, this is small r this depth is capital z this depth is uh, capital d minus z this depth is uh, capital d this is also capital d okay from similar triangle this length is equal to this length right now 
can someone tell what is this one mm, okay sorry so this one this length is here z so path for surface reflection is total say this point is a this point is b this point is c so path for surface reflection is equal to ab plus bc ab plus bc very good and suppose this point is uh, k so ab equal to bk ab equal to bk so we can write as bk plus bc right bk plus bc equal to what kc this point to this point kc so now we can write kc as this horizontal distance is r this vertical distance length is how much this say this point is o so we can write kc square equal to k o square plus o c square. o square plus o c square or you can say r square let's say yeah o c square correct o c square so what is k o what is k o z z what b plus z b plus z plus o c is R. r r square very good so kc becomes the path for surface reflection that is r s so kc becomes r s equal to square root of oh did i do something wrong This, uh, is there something wrong because someone told uh, z square right someone initially told r square yes sir i told you b plus z also deep yes 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 so is there something wrong am i doing something wrong or if it is correct if it is correct it's okay then did you check it <laughs> it just square or you just uh, told because i told it is wrong i didn't because, check sir i okay so you just uh, just to impress everyone <laughs> you tell it is just square no? no 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 i i didn't want to interrupt you so i said no 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 no, 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 no. then that's that's not the point you should discuss it right if something so if uh, is it correct r square i may be wrong sometimes. yes yes, yes sir, sir it, it is correct it does look correct it does look correct no but uh, but uh, are you really sure yes i am also getting the same sir same sir so r square is correct right yes okay okay so what should i do i should uh, correct this one here yeah very good yeah yeah mistakes can be made by you. so let us correct this one r square okay okay so now everything is matching d plus z square plus r square so we have our path for surface reflection and path for direct wave now we are coming to the third thing path for what is the third thing third length layer reflection path for layer reflection let us say that length is rl now we have to compute this one rl so first you try yourself 
सर इज इट कमिंग स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ आर स्क्वायर प्लस ब्रैकेट टू एच माइनस डी माइनस एच होल स्क्वायर टू एच माइनस डी माइनस जेड होल स्क्वायर वेरी गुड इट इज मैचिंग विद माई रिजल्ट दिस वन इज मैचिंग विद माई रिजल्ट so i want all of you to try uh, for say 2 minutes and then we can discuss just try yourself has anyone tried apart from my pal sign yes sir have you tried yes sir yes sir are you getting this answer yes sir okay so is there any need to explain does anyone want it to explain there is no need to be shy if anyone want to explain we can go ahead so let us try so this is ground surface this is again the point on the structure depth is z now we have this lower layer from where the reflection is happening so this is the reflected wave which is reaching this is the ms source from where the wave is coming again so this is the location of your missile again similar triangle rule this length is equal to this length so total path of reflection will be suppose this is a this is b this is c so total path of ray reflection will be ab plus bc and ab equal to say this this point is k so bk ab equal to bk so rl will be bk plus bc so bk plus bc is nothing but kc now we have to compute the length of kc so we will draw a parallel line from here and then this oh, 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 very bad drawing so again this length is d minus z d minus z very good so this total length of ak is equal to anyone 2h minus d minus z what is this length sorry uh, i did not put this one this is h minus, h minus d, d. Uh, so this total depth was capital h right am i correct yes sir so this total depth was capital h is small h the depth of point a was capital d so this remaining part is h minus d h minus d so we can write ak is equal to h minus d plus am i correct or yes sir again h minus d ah or this remaining is h minus d so h minus d plus d minus z so this becomes 2h minus d minus z this is your length a uh, ak a k am i correct okay and this is how much r so we can write 
के सी स्क्वायर इक्वल टू आर स्क्वायर प्लस टू एच माइनस डी माइनस जेड होल स्क्वायर सो योर आर एल बिकम्स स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ आर स्क्वायर प्लस टू एच माइनस डी माइनस जेड होल स्क्वायर सो विद दिस ऑल दिस कैलकुलेशन यू कैन कंप्यूट द लेंथ ऑफ द पाथ the three types of path direct path surface reflection layer reflection now suppose we want to compute for example this is the target point on the structure that we are interested where the waves are reaching so there will be some direct waves coming to this one then some reflected waves coming to this one and then some layer reflected waves are coming to this one so all these waves the direct wave the surface reflection the layer reflection these waves will reach at this particular point at uh, different times right so because because is there someone asking some question uh, maybe i'm let me check uh, keep okay odish uh, admit shiva you were not able to join shiva <coughs> okay why he is uh, showing outside educational join i don't know actually sir we both are in the lab okay 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 anyways so yeah so when all these three types of uh, different uh, waves shock waves are reaching to the target point they are moving through different paths but they all are moving in the same medium so the wave velocity for all of them will remain the same so for example we can calculate the time of travel of direct wave surface reflected wave and layer reflected wave so time of travel of the direct wave will be rd upon c1 so c1 is let's say wave velocity in medium one in which your structure the, the point of the target point is uh, established in this case i have shown things in a very simplified manner maybe in the midterm examination this c1 may not remain constant the reflected rays may come through or may the, the the target point is such that the waves are traveling to to different media so be careful be uh, very vigilant to understand all each and every single step and the assumptions behind it because there may be any kind of question for example let me show a case so this is the layer we are considering here right this is air this is media 1 this is media 2 right and your structure is here the point of target is here what if your point of target is here right so that can be really interesting but if you know the concept if you know what is happening uh, you should be able to do all the calculations so time of travel of the surface reflection will be rs upon c1 and what is the tl time of arrival of reflected wave from deeper layer anyone rl upon c1 rl upon c1 very good <laughs> so if if you know something please say with confidence okay so rd upon c1 rs upon c1 rl upon c1 so these different waves will reach at different time 
so suppose if this particular wave is causing the overpressure time history for this type uh, Lay, uh, there is a no rising time, say, assume it like this, something like this. And this one causes, say, something like another one. And this causes, say, something another like this one. Okay. So this is defined by, say, R, uh, RS type. Say, this is defined by RD type. Say, this is defined by RL type. So, in the nutshell, how it will look like here? So I ask you all of you to draw and maybe the one who has drawn it, he can share, he or she can share his screen and maybe show quickly. How it will look like or maybe I will draw and then you can cross check and let me know if it is correct or not. So let us draw what will be the effective PT effective PT will be something like say RDT plus RST plus RLT right how it will look like I'm just talking about shape. I'm not talking about the uh, what we say magnitude for the time being. Sir, there will be three peaks. Three peaks. Okay. So like this, first uh, there will be some arrival time of this a direct wave. Yes, sir. And then there will be sudden rise. Yes, sir. And then it will decay. It will take a little bit and then maybe another wave will be coming. So the, the magnitude will again rise. Okay, then it, there will be again rise, right? Okay. Maybe let, let's assume like this. And uh, okay. then there will be some drop and then again it will be a rise. And then there will be again rise, right? Yes, sir. And then, and then it will go down to near to the zero. Something like that. Yes. Maybe some, some longer path. Huh? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Anyone else? Any comments? In the peak increases. No, that yeah, that is true. So peak may or may not increase, that will depend upon so many factors. Because suppose at what particular time the second peak is arriving for example suppose this is your first uh, first wave let me show on a new page that will be much interesting so say your these are three cases right on the timeline okay so say first wave is arriving here then there is a sudden rise and then it starts decreasing and then second wave suppose is arriving here this has a peak like this and then it is going to glide and third wave say is arriving here and it is going like this so qualitatively it may be little difficult to answer whether the so for example if it is arriving here okay then certainly the chances of peak be, will be smaller that peak uh, suppose if it is arriving there or suppose if it is arriving at this part there are very high chances the second peak will be higher compared to the first peak so that question may be a little bit uh, difficult to answer qualitatively but quantitatively you can see very clearly 
In addition to that, if we also assume the effect of attenuation, then scenario will be completely different. Then the pressure that we have to consider will be something like this. Let's say uh, right now, suppose for this one, you are taking say P0, right? Say E minus alpha T. But then you have to consider an attenuation P0 RD E minus alpha T. So this term is telling you what peak over pressure after traveling a distance RD in the geo medium. So there can be different types of attenuation equations. For example, let me show this one. In this particular slide, yeah, sorry, yeah. So in particular slide, in this slide, I have shown. So explosion happens here. Wave is traveling here for a distance capital R. So P R will be given by this kind of expression. Right. If we consider this, if we consider this type of attenuation, so our peak over pressure should be modified accordingly. So that's why I have written it here just like a peak over pressure will be function of distance of travel by the wave. So for this one, for direct wave, it will be P0 RD. For surface reflection, it will be P0 P0 RS RS. For this one, it will be P0 RL. And then we accordingly, we can write our Friedlander equation. We can combine them and we can get a net resultant. Uh, sir, I have one question here. Is yes. it right to use the term uh, pressure here? Because it is in the zero media. So uh, pressure is related to exposed ah. area, right? It is yes, yes. So, so basically it is stress. Stress that is uh, reaching to the uh, structure. It is shock wave. So basically it is the units of this one will be say in the TPA. So you can say uh, a kind of stress that is reaching to the structure. So in my opinion, the right term should be stress. But conventionally, because when we are talking about Friedlander equation or anything, generally the conventional religious symbolism that has been defined uh, comes out to be P0. So that's why all the computations, all the kind of uh, uh, empirical equations that you will uh, see have been written in the terms of P. But actually, it should be understood as a stress. It is obvious that uh, it's not like, uh, what we say, the pressure. It's a stress. That is stress because this is the stress wave propagation. So basically, it is causing some kind of stress. You are right. Uh, maybe for more clarity, uh, people should have used the symbol sigma, right? In the case of uh, buried explosions. But uh, if you find sometimes they will use sigma also, but sometimes they will also use P0. But as in uh, what we say, the, you should read between the lines and it should be understood as a stress only.
because pressure is something that is uh, you are right so that's the part of conventions and uh, the way it has been uh, communicated previously but uh, for our understanding we can uh, consider it like stress only because this is stress based propagation okay so now we are going to move ahead so let us keep this one save this one so now it's oh it's already 10 48 so now i'm going to start a uh, three-dimensional uh, wave propagation because till now we discussed uh we discussed only one dimensional phenomena and uh, we developed one dimensional wave propagation equation we understood all the things but in reality in field you will see uh the three dimensional structure right so we should have some basics of uh what i believe that we should understand the 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 problem in a more holistic way and we should be able to appreciate the 3d structure of the problem so now we will be discussing three dimensional uh, wave propagation and uh, we will just discuss some basic terminologies and maybe we will try to uh, relate with uh, one in, because now we have the basics of one dimensional wave propagation so now we will extend it to three dimensions only so maybe for to start the discussion the time is not enough and uh, maybe i will stop here and uh, so let's close this one and now we can uh, start our so uh, who want to give the viva now okay my pal okay okay so those who want to give the viva please uh, 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 be in the call uh, stop recording Others can.